torrents of steam and smoke, the last of the old iron workhorses from the age of steam are gasping their last breath. For over a hundred years, the steam locomotive represented the most efficient means of overland transportation. But since the Second World War, they've been fast disappearing, replaced by more modern machines. Although endangered, the old breed of locomotive continues rolling down the railways of China and India, but not for long. Ancient and mysterious. These vast lands of the East are steeped in a wondrous past. Once the cradle of civilization, they now stand as the last strongholds for the vanishing era of steam. Follow us now as we journey through the cold northern frontiers of China and the windswept deserts of India for a rare glimpse into the last great empires of steam. Long before the travels of Marco Polo, the land of the East appeared exotic and elusive to outsiders, veiled in an alluring mystery. Throughout its 5,000-year history, China's bountiful riches have attracted many invaders. The early railways of China were built by foreign powers intent on extracting the nation's natural resources. Although the train was introduced late in China, it was eventually hailed as the land of 10,000 steam locomotives. In northeastern China, the village continues to be the focal point in the daily lives of a strong and patient people. It is in this cold and desolate region that men can still be seen inspecting the drive wheel of a working steam locomotive. With winter temperatures plummeting to 40 degrees below zero, encasing metal with ice. Superheated steam from locomotives bursts into wildly billowing clouds that can be seen for miles. Like an apparition from a bygone era, a swirling plume of steam and smoke radiates upwards against the backdrop of a frozen winter landscape. This QJ-class locomotive is one of the few steam trains that linger on here in the farthest reaches of China. Well off of the beaten path, one can still travel across the rails to find a people largely untouched by the modern world. Small amenities, such as the bicycle, have barely changed the way that the people of northeastern China live, facing the same challenges as their forefathers. Steam trains run across grasslands once home to the legendary Mongol conqueror Genghis Khan. The Mongols' able horsemanship allowed them to carve out a vast empire stretching from Vietnam to Hungary. Today, horses and donkeys still carry the people, although they too are being phased out in favor of more modern forms of transport. China's rush to modernize has begun transforming the land. Yet its steam trains have not been completely chased off the rails. Ironically, China's dramatic development 
has made even the old steam locomotive necessary in meeting a tremendous growth in rail traffic, currently exceeding one and a half billion tons of freight and one billion passengers every year. High demand has given these obsolete trains a temporary lease on life. The face of Chairman Mao, the revolutionary father of communist China, still looms above Tiananmen Square in Beijing. In his great leap forward, Mao tried to transform China into a productive paradise. Accordingly, he launched a concerted effort to modernize, standardize, and expand China's railways. This expansion continues as new diesel and electric locomotives are added every year to the 12,000 or more already in use. But these newer trains have not yet taken China over completely. Here, a steam locomotive helps a diesel move its heavy load up a steep grade. Like a metaphor of China itself, the old bolsters the new in a collective push forward. At the turn of the century, when the emperor still lived in the forbidden city, a powerful cry was heard among the public demanding that the newly built railways be placed under Chinese control, not in the hands of the foreigners who had financed them. Until 1949, the railways remained unloved symbols of foreign domination. It was in northeastern China, particularly within the province of Inner Mongolia, that the scope of foreign domination reached its pinnacle. For centuries, the people of this rugged and isolated region depended upon horses and camels for transportation. Travel here was difficult, largely confined to short distances. This all changed dramatically after the Japanese invaded in September of 1931, planning to establish a productive colony. The Japanese set out to improve transportation in order to exploit the region's rich resources without getting bogged down along its poor roads. As reports of civilian massacres spread, millions of Chinese fled before the advancing Japanese armies, carrying what little they could on their backs. The few available locomotives strained to pull trains filled with refugees, sadly leaving their former lives behind. Those who remained faced a challenging and often traumatic fate. Untold numbers were forced to labor for the Japanese occupiers, building the railways that served to strengthen the Japanese grip on one-fifth of the country. Worked to the bone in some of the most inhospitable areas of their vanquished land, these rails were laid with the sweat and blood of thousands upon thousands of Chinese workers. The Japanese seized almost 5,000 miles of track and had the run of over 40% of China's existing railways, expanding them substantially to better shuttle troops across the country and transport materials destined for the motherland. Massive mines were blasted into existence, yielding vast quantities of coal. The Japanese warlords enjoyed the fruits of their Chinese subjects' backbreaking labor. This so-called colony of Manchukuo remained for 14 years a vital cog in the Japanese expansionist war machine. Though tragic in their origins, the northeastern Chinese railways now serve the very land they were built to exploit. Today, the steam locomotive provides northeastern China a vital source of transportation. Despite the ravages of war, the Mongolian people survive, continuing to support themselves through subsistence agriculture. Still, change has come slowly to a place where the automobile is rare 
the donkey cart common. Fathers continue to teach their children how to care for the animals upon which they rely, and children are treasured as parents are allowed only one. The Chinese people have grown accustomed to their steam trains as they have crossed paths daily for over a century. While there are approximately 2,000 steam locomotives left, the government has accelerated their replacement, scrapping over 400 of them annually. China's countless local markets, such as this one in Chifeng, boast a bountiful cornucopia of fresh produce carried here by train from farms across the country. Finding their way into the hands of small entrepreneurs, apples, cabbage, bamboo shoots, and a host of other fruits and vegetables are sold from makeshift stands. Most are family owned and operated. In his youth, he did not enjoy the variety now brought by train and other mechanized vehicles. While facing imminent signs of danger, the old steam locomotive continues operating as a useful part of China's transportation system. Today, its use is largely limited to the open expanses of rural China. These two QJ locomotives move through once verdant grasslands, now turned to frost-coated brown by the chill of winter. Nomadic tribes once moved with the seasons here in search of pastures for their animals. Today, this land's ancient byways are intersected by the well-worn rails of the steam train, which penetrates the thick silence of its desolate spaces. It is in the Great Wall, besieged for centuries by man and nature, that one finds the monumental symbol of the Chinese people's enduring resilience. The city of Chengde in northern China is home to one of the last strongholds of steam train activity in the world. Bathed in the early morning light of an eastern sunrise, an SY locomotive erupts in near volcanic displays of superheated smoke and steam. China's steady progress has largely shunted steam into the background. Racing headlong towards the future, the Chinese people have eagerly embraced the modern while continuing to rely upon old strengths. The steam locomotive is part of a national movement forward, helping the old China to cross over into the new millennium as a mighty economic superpower. Despite its bad reputation as a polluter, the Chinese rely upon their vast reserves of coal to fuel much of the country. The sight of men unloading coal from railway cars is a common one, as blackened workers labor amidst the soot and dust. A cigarette offers a moment of rest and reverie for these tired hands. In the areas where steam still hangs on, there's plenty of coal and water, the two things needed to run a steam locomotive.
By preserving the largest concentration of steam railway activity in the world, China has managed to avoid total dependence on foreign oil. These railway cars, brimming with their full load of coal, are headed south, destined perhaps for the large industrial cities that have sprung up along the coast. Until cleaner burning fuels are embraced, countless tons of coal will continue to be carried by train and consumed by a fuel-hungry nation. A few miles west of the Chengde rail yards is the steelworks branch depot, which serves as a transition point for trains hauling coal to nearby power plants. The early morning sun barely breaks the freezing grip of night as steam and smoke from these twin locomotives explode against the Arctic air. These railway men must work through the incredibly cold winter months stretching from December into March. Remarkably, they seem not to mind. Rare SY and JS class steam locomotives still abound here, unlike the rest of China, where modern trains now prevail. As the last of the steam locomotives rolled off China's assembly lines in the 1990s, their days are clearly numbered. Here, some of these last great machines are loaded up with coal from a coal tower. A prominent feature of the traditional rail yards of yesteryear, most coal towers have been pulled down in recent times. Little rain falls on the province of Inner Mongolia. With winter comes the life-giving snows swept by strong winds blowing down from Siberia encasing the countryside in an impenetrable arctic chill. Temperatures here frequently drop to 40 degrees below zero. Breaking the stillness of this ice age landscape are the largest and most powerful steam engines working China's rails, the mechanical mastodons of the legendary QJ class. In the upper reaches of Inner Mongolia, 580 miles of track circulates life between the cities of Tongliao and Jining. Remarkably, this line is 100% steam operated and is serviced by the Daban Rail Yards, perhaps the largest facility of its kind left anywhere in the world. It's here that the giant 135-ton QJ class of steam locomotives are kept alive and well by a trained army of workers. Moving parts, like the QJ's 59-inch drive wheels, are carefully inspected for any problems. Valves are examined closely, then tightened. The QJ is loaded up with 9,600 gallons of water and 15 tons of coal used to generate the steam that propels it forward. These workers are kept very busy as the QJ can be driven only a couple hundred miles before it needs to be refueled and inspected yet again. Ice can dangerously build up in this harsh climate. A torch 
comes in handy at getting a frozen valve unstuck and back in working order. These workers take great pride in their machines, maintaining them meticulously with the same care that one might apply to a classic car. First built in 1959, the last QJs rolled off the production lines in 1988. With exceptional attention to detail, no part of the train escapes scrutiny in the final inspection at the Daban rail yards. These well-serviced trains are almost ready to go as they sit and slowly build up enough steam pressure to move on their way once again. Here, an extremely rare steam-powered crane can be found loading coal into the tender of a locomotive. Like all other recently built steam depots in China, Daban lacks the impressive hardware that used to be found around steam locomotives. Gone are the old coal towers, ash hoists, and turntables. Instead, coaling and ash disposal is handled by self-propelled cranes such as this one. Steam cranes like this once played a crucial role in building the Suez and Panama canals, but now they no longer work on wonders of the world. Like the locomotive it services, the steam crane is yet another of China's vanishing relics. Although Daban appears formidable from a distance, history is set to overtake this last stronghold of steam. While many of its QJ locomotives should run into the 21st century, their fate at the hands of progress appears to be sealed. Until the steam locomotive came along, the main means of moving people and hauling loads was provided by either human or animal power. After more than 120 years of continuous progress, world steam locomotive development practically stopped in 1950. Except in China, where steam continued to expand across the landscape. In 1995, a 100% steam-operated line was completed and opened to the world. In northern China, along the Tungliao Jining Line, the adventurous spirit can ride through the formidable Jinpang Pass, the last great steam-powered mountain line built anywhere in the world. Full of tunnels, viaducts, and sweeping curves, this 40-mile mountain pass is truly a spectacular piece of railway by any standards. Since 1995, steam trains have begun servicing several small villages nestled amongst the mountain slopes. Before the rail line brought steam service to this area, these villagers had no more than a small road connecting them to the nearest city five hours away. While their daily chores may remain unchanged, the steam train has brought an end to centuries of near total isolation. The children of these ancient villages are bound to live more in touch with the world outside. The grades of the Jinpang Pass are so steep that most freight trains require at least two massive QJ steam locomotives to make it up to the summit.
daily dramas unfold here as man and his machines dare to challenge the forces of nature. Only five to ten trains are able to slowly make their way through the pass each day. With drive wheels sometimes slipping, these mighty steam locomotives carry on undaunted all the way to the top. Upon conquering the summit of the Jinpang Pass, the engineer eases his train into the siding, allowing other trains the opportunity to pass. These sturdy workers diligently attend to their locomotives, seemingly impervious to the bone-chilling temperatures present at this lofty summit. Penetrating deep into China's vast interior, the train was a key agent of change. The steam locomotive bridged the cultural and geographical boundaries that had kept the Chinese people divided for so long. To unfamiliarize, the first sight of an approaching train was a phenomenon unlike any encountered before. A magical, fire-breathing creature, an object made of iron that had somehow sprung to life. Though the train was not conjured up by a sorcerer, it left almost nothing it touched unaltered, and that was its magic. More than anything else, the steam train transported the modern world to the rural lands of ancient China, intertwining the nation in a giant web of steel. The steam locomotive is so much a part of the soul of the nation that the landscape has become almost unimaginable without it, until now. Dying a slow death, it's likely to succumb to its own obsolescence sooner than it will fall to rust. While some of China's steam locomotives could continue plying the rails for years to come, they are destined to exist only in the pages of history books. In India, that time has come today, and the final hour of the steam locomotive is now at hand as our journey continues. India, a magical nation created out of a wild mixture of people and places spread out over a subcontinent and woven together along 40,000 miles of track. As in China, the railways of India were instrumental in bringing the nation together and pushing it towards the modern age. No other people in the world depend more heavily on their railways than the Indians, with almost four billion passengers riding the trains annually. Poverty forces many to travel on foot, and over 50 Indians are killed every day along the rails. Nonetheless, India's railways are a source of national pride. The steam train has already vanished from most cities across the country. It is only in a handful of states, such as Rajasthan, that the wayward traveler might find one of India's few remaining steam locomotives. In the Rajasthani desert, small villages stand like isolated islands, miraculously supporting life. 
With walls virtually cracking in the intense heat, these desert dwellers eke out a hard existence, though now sustained by the lifeline of the rails. A proud and rugged people, nothing could have stirred their imagination more than the advancing image of a steam train shooting smoke and steam into a virgin sky. Since 1853, the steam train has been a moving part of India's enchanted landscape. Bracing for the 21st century and the projected explosion in passenger and freight traffic, the Indian railways have launched a program of modernization and expansion that will eliminate steam. Once a symbol of progress and the pride of the nation, India's steam locomotives are now rapidly being scrapped. But a few dozen locomotives still survive. Nonetheless, by the year 2000, there will only be a single steam line left in all the country. These, then, are passing sights. Rising out of the colossal far desert like a mirage drawn from the pages of a thousand and one nights, the castle fortress of Jaisalmer is a dazzling jewel of the desert. Jaisalmer transcends time, radiating a splendor held over from the days when this was a major stop along the legendary Silk Road. Locals live here amidst exquisitely carved sandstone havelis, traveling daily along its narrow streets filled with a pungency of spice-scented bazaars. Jaisalmer is truly a scorching beauty. Temperatures often soar past 105 degrees, but it's always cool within the thick walls of this 12th century fortress. Before the days of the railroad, the bullock cart and the camel were the only options for those courageous enough to journey to faraway places like Jaisalmer. India's railways were introduced during the days of the British Raj, transforming the nature of travel here dramatically. It was British alarm over the security of their colonial possession that drove them to build India's railways. The train strengthened their tenuous hold on the outlying regions of this vast subcontinent, which they dominated for nearly 200 years. Thus, the railways were a target of sabotage by nationalists seeking to drive out the British in their Quit India movement culminating with India's independence in 1947. The National Rail Museum in New Delhi pays homage to the days when the steam train reigned supreme. Over two dozen steam locomotives from India's railroading past have been painstakingly preserved and proudly put on display. Although many of these locomotives were built at the turn of the century, Indian steam power actually reached its zenith in 1964, with close to 11,000 locomotives riding upon four different gauges of track. For years, India was home to a wide variety of locomotive shapes, styles, and sizes. Besides carrying freight and passengers, the Indian railways figured prominently into the military strategy of the British. These armored cars were dispatched to hot spots like the northwestern frontier, where British soldiers were sometimes greeted by the resounding clank of bullets hitting the armor. But these sounds are now distant echoes, as the sun set long ago on the British Empire. 
No longer are the Indian railways dominated by companies headquartered in London, whose long defunct names still grace these colorful emblems. After independence, India's 42 separate railways were nationalized. The museum celebrates India's diverse railway heritage by keeping these iron artifacts intact. Jaipur, the rail hub and capital of Rajasthan, is known as the Pink City. Camel carts drawn along its broad avenues add to Jaipur's exotic atmosphere. The city is swept in pink, a color traditionally symbolizing hospitality. Its glow radiates from the Palace of the Winds, built in 1799 for the ladies of the Maharaja. Jaipur's city palace stunningly blends Rajasthani and Mughal architecture. Safely guarded, the son of the last Maharaja still dwells within its opulent interiors. Just a short elephant ride from Jaipur is the formidable Amber Fort, built in the 16th century by an astronomer prince to symbolize the sacred order of the cosmos. Bristling with terraces and ramparts, this hilltop fort was a military stronghold of the Mughals. Leaving Jaipur, we board the Chitak Express train for the 14-hour journey to the city of Udaipur in southern Rajasthan. One of the last cities served by the steam train, Udaipur is steeped in a glorious past. The Indian subcontinent is as vast as it is crowded. The birthplace of Hinduism and Buddhism, this nation of nearly one billion people boasts a dazzling diversity, with its multitude of ethnic groups speaking over 1,600 languages and dialects across more than two million miles of widely varying geography and climates. The railways help to unite the country, fostering new trade and communication links between India's diverse people and far-flung places. India is a young nation, but one which possesses an ancient identity. The majority of Indians continue to live in the rural village, as they have for over 4,000 years. While modern technology weaves its way into the fabric of Indian society, the fundamental character of family and religious life survives intact. Though a major agent of change, the railways have not stopped life from going on here much as it always has. Passenger cars are slowly rolled across the tracks at the Udaipur train station. This city in southern Rajasthan still uses a few steam locomotives, largely for arranging the rail cars that make up the trains. Many of India's remaining steam locomotives have been relegated to this diminished role of shunting and ignoble fate for these once mighty machines. The British built the first rail line into Udaipur in 1895, and until recently, these 58-ton YG-282 steam locomotives could be frequently seen coming and going. But as time only moves forward, these machines are being left behind in the wake of change. As Udaipur's urban and industrial sprawl spreads beyond the city's original boundaries, a great deal of the past is being swept from this historic place.
India's state-run railways have over 13,000 trains, operated by 1.6 million workers, making it the second largest network in the world. Chronically inefficient, India's poor railway system has impeded progress, failing to keep pace with the nation's rapid growth. In the 50 years since independence, less than 6,000 miles of track have been added, keeping the nation on the slow track towards prosperity. With its serene lakeside palaces and ancient stone ghats, the old city of Udaipur bewitches the traveler in its mystery and romance. Since its founding in 1568, the city was one of the few princely states to retain its sovereignty through the Mughal and British empires. Udaipur harbors the majestic Lake Palace, an architectural marvel that seems to float upon the water's surface. A few miles north of Udaipur is the Jain temple of Rana Kapoor, towering an eternal tribute to the gods. Built in the 15th century, the temple is supported by 1,444 intricately hand-carved marble pillars, of which no two are alike. Just outside of Udaipur is Rana Pratap Sagar, home to the only maintenance facility still servicing steam locomotives on the Udaipur line. The tradition of working on the steam railways will not be passed on to India's younger generation. As the policy of the Indian railways prohibits dismissing any workers, these men will have to learn new skills or simply retire. Grossly underfunded, they work hard to keep their rickety locomotives running a little while longer. Although India has vast coal reserves, 20% of its railway budget is spent on importing diesel fuel from abroad, creating a financial burden that expands as coal-burning steam locomotives are replaced. Steam technology is basic and forgiving, allowing for homegrown repairs, while diesels require the kind of sophisticated parts and highly paid technicians that India can ill afford. As India's era of steam power draws to a close, these last men of steam struggle in vain against Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction. Soon, this engine will be solemnly wheeled to face the executioner's blowtorch in this steam locomotive graveyard. Here, at the end of the line, the locomotives sit in an eerie silence, waiting. One by one, they will be sliced apart and sold for scrap, until there will be not a single one left in all the country. Sunrise in Udaipur. This picturesque city is rightfully called the Venice of the East. A locomotive's horn echoes off the surrounding hills, announcing the departure of train number 222. She leaves the station as the last steam-powered passenger train still running out of Udaipur. Once, passenger trains like this proudly carried India's founding father, Gandhi, as he traveled across the land, rallying his countrymen around the cause of Indian independence. Once as dependable as clockwork, this train has grown slow in her old age, and breakdowns and delays are now frequent. 
Only a shadow of her former self, she is gasping her last breath. Just a few months after these images were filmed, the steam locomotive seen pulling this train was condemned, and one of the only passenger steam trains left in all of India is now gone forever. India is a nation rooted in the past, yet firmly on the road to modernity. Much of the country's roads and railways were inherited from the British. Overburdened and under-maintained, modern changes are being made to improve efficiency. In the meantime, old modes of transportation survive, helping to link together India's 25 states and seven union territories until the future prevails. As the curtains close on the great steam railways of India, we glimpse the last vestiges of a vanishing time that will soon become no more than a footnote in history. For these workers, it's a sad time of change, but the legacy of India's steam railways will remain vivid in the nostalgic tales that they'll surely pass on to future generations. Having helped unite and sustain the Indian people for nearly a century and a half, the steam locomotive deserves a hallowed place alongside the other great heroes of the nation. For the steam locomotive has become one with the landscape, along with the echoing sound of its whistle as it rolls one last time across the hills and plains of India. India.